Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. My name is Christina, and I'm the events coordinator here at Books Are Magic. Before we get started, I wanted to point out some logistics for how tonight's going to go. We'll be doing a hand-raised audience Q&A towards the end of the event, so start thinking of questions to ask now. After the talk tonight, Ngozi and Matt will be signing and personalizing books at the desk near where you checked in. We also have additional books available to purchase from my colleagues at the register. If you're joining us virtually on the live stream, we'd love to encourage you to buy a copy of Bunt online using the link in the live stream description. It's my pleasure to introduce you all tonight to Bunt. From the creator of Check Please and debut artist Madeline Rupert, a YA graphic novel about a girl who loses her art scholarship and cooks up a plan to win one game of softball in order to earn the school's athletic scholarship instead. It's a softball scheme for the ages. My friend Teo says, I don't know how to be normal about how much I love this. It's really fucking funny. That's my review. <laughs> <laughs> Ngozi Yukazu is a DC comic artist, New York Times bestselling graphic novelist, and the creator of comics like Check, Please, Bunt, and the forthcoming graphic novel Flip. She graduated from Yale University, and since 2020, her cartoons have appeared in The New Yorker. Mad Rupert is less than five feet tall and lives in Somerville, Massachusetts. <laughs> she got her start in online comics over 10 years ago and authors two ongoing web comics, Sakana, a slice of life workplace comedy, and Robber Robert, a sci-fi romance for mature readers. She's also worked extensively on comic adaptations of Cartoon Network properties like Adventure Time, Regular Show, and Steven Universe. Mad is short for Madeline, and she's not actually angry. <laughs> Jeremy Nguyen has contributed cartoons regularly to The New Yorker since 2017. He's provided illustrations and cartoons to Netflix, HBO, Hermes, Bottega Veneta, The Strand Bookstore, and is author of the book, Can I Pet Your Dog? He teaches at Parsons School of Design in Manhattan and lives in Brooklyn, New York. Let's all give a very warm welcome to Ngozi, Mad, and Jeremy. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I think, hello. We, I think we need a copy of the book so we can do the... Oh, you're doing So that. we do the dramatic... <gasps> Why, thank you. Thank you. We are... We're going to read from it. Should we start with that or... I yeah, please. Uh, oh, yes, you guys will start with a reading. Then we'll do a... Uh, I'll ask some questions. Yeah. Um, and then there will be time for a Q&A afterwards. But um, what page are we starting on, just in case everyone wants to follow along in their book? This feels like church. <laughs> <laughs> what hymn will we be singing today? <laughs> Please open to the book of Biddy. <laughs> no, wrong, wrong one. Wrong one. Oh my god, I thought that was it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's around here. There. Um, no, no it's, it's too far. Yeah. It's this one. Okay. I think, I think we can start maybe right there okay all right sure. uh, okay okay what uh, page is this? Th oh yeah this is page 122 <laughs> um, <laughs> open <Psalms>. your <laughs> if you know the words you can <laughs> feel sing free along to sing along well. and jesus said to the sinners <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so Jesus said to the sinners, so you're dedicated <laughs> to Micah. Uh, okay, uh, I'll be reading uh, Molly and... I'll be reading Susanna. Yeah. Okay, let's start. So you're dedicated to Pika, huh? Huh? <laughs> I read your spot in the view book. <laughs> Sorry. Keep it together. <laughs> Keep it together. It all makes sense. It's still your dream school. You're still gaga for this place, even after it screwed you over. I was wondering why you were sucking up to the president. Everyone here wants to go to Pika. That's why we're doing this. That's why you're doing this. <laughs> not everyone. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm not very smart, and I don't like get art. <laughs> I only know sports. My mom made me come here, and, well... I got kicked out, and she pulled strings to get me back in. You were expelled? Long story. Molly, I'm a super senior. I've seen Pika chew up and s chew up and spit out so many people in my life, so many people in this city. You shouldn't put too much faith in this place. It's already hurt you once. Once, but not again. We have a plan. 
Yeah, right. The best laid plans of mics and men. Mics and men? Yeah, I read it in a book. It means watch out. <laughs> Sorry for getting aggro. <laughs> it's just hard not to shout when you see someone you like heading for a big hurt. And I think we're getting to know each other. Ooh. Zoom. <laughs> okay. Um, That's yeah, enough. I think we should. I think we should leave it there. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> and this just in: Madeline has been nominated for no. a Golden Globe. <laughs> I've been nominated for the opposite of a Golden Globe. A flat Earth. <laughs> Shit. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. No. Um, yeah, and thanks to Books or Magic for having us. Um, Thank you but so yeah, much. Thank you, guys. You guys have such obviously insane chemistry. You guys have to tell us where you guys met. Oh, my God. Should I start? Yeah, you should start. Okay, so after college, I really wanted to go to grad school for art. And at SCAD, the main thing about SCAD is the Savannah that, College of Art and Design Savannah, in Savannah, Savannah Georgia. Georgia. Sorry, yeah, Savannah College of Art and Design. The main thing was that I didn't want to pay any money for it. <laughs> and I, I had heard of this elusive scholarship, like a full ride scholarship that they would give to grad students. And I was asking the professors about it, but only one person had it. And I was just like, who, who in the, I wanted, like, who is this person? I wanted to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember, I remember there, like when I actually found out who it was, like they were like, oh, it's this person named Madeline Rupert. Ah. And I was just like, Okay. Took uh, my money. <laughs> I know. And I also have to take these introductory classes too, because oh, sure. that that the Mad didn't have to take because she wasn't right. in any of her classes. And I was just like, oh, she must think she's so great. She <laughs> gets all this money. She apparently can draw better than me. And I remember looking up her web comic Sakana, and I typed it in, and I was just like, let's really see what this chick is. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, she deserves all that money. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had also been uh, going, to, like, uh, propositioning all of the professors, like, hey, you like me. You know that I draw real well. You want to help me get this uh, scholarship, right? So we were both thinking the same thing. <laughs> they helped you. Yes. They didn't help me. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> but then, oh, we were uh, assigned... Uh, we were assigned each other. Like I got your yes. scripts. There were there are two separate classes. There yep. was foundation of foundations of sequential art, which you were taking, and there was script writing for sequential art, which I was taking. And the first big project is to sort of pair the scripts with students yep. in the foundations class to draw. So it's like a way to like meet your classmates and everything like that. So. Yeah, um, the thing you have to know about my very first quarter uh, as a grad student is that I was uh, desperately ill with bronchitis. Uh, <laughs> the wor the probably the sickest I've ever been in my entire life, and um, I did not write a very good script because I was very ill. It, it was a good script. It was a good script. And uh, a f like a week before the class, I got this email from somebody named uh, Ngozi Yukazu <laughs> with just like, I have some notes on your script. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which I did not respond to because I was like, I'm sick. <laughs> and who is I this bitch? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think this is part of the class. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. I'm sorry. So the day what, came. Yeah, what was the script about? It was some like cute like fantasy something. <laughs> Like fantasy monster attacks a little witch girl or something. She mm. like defeats yeah. him. <laughs> something like that. Something yeah. innocuous. Do you, do you remember the name? I don't want to say it. Okay, well, let's not say it. <laughs> it's called. It was called the Chatterbog. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantasy. Okay. It sounds pretty good. Sounds Thanks. Pretty good. I actually it didn't remember it. So you Anyways, the day came when we were both in class together, and um, the teacher called me up and was like, okay, here's Mad script. And Mad is paired with Ngozi. Called Ngozi up. It's like, here are your pages. I have like my notebook. I was like, all right, so here's what I think. Yeah, <laughs> really bad. And be I was very ill. I, I just want to preface that. At SCAD, you can only miss four uh, classes per quarter. And on the fifth one, you fail the class. Right. So I had already <laughs> used up my four <laughs> classes being desperately ill. Uh, I had to be there, and I didn't have glasses at the time, and I've got pretty bad vision. So when Ngozi stood up and was like, I have some notes, I turned around like, <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then uh, three years later, I was a bridesmaid in your wedding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. We say it's Got over the edits. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, we really thought, uh, you really thought I hated you. Yeah. At the beginning there. But I was just sick. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so that was your first collaboration. Yes. Yes, is it this, was. Is Bunt your second collaboration? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's like our first official collaboration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Outside of school. Yes. We went cool. from enemies to collaborators. To collaborators, yeah. To lovers. To lovers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to friends. To friends. <laughs> Back what, to yeah. enemies. <laughs> <laughs> what made you guys want to work together and do do this book in particular? Oh, well, working together, Mad's one of the best artists that I know, just flat out, no jokes there. Uh, but this book in particular, I think, boom, you actually remembered this. I totally forgot. Yeah. There is a, another publisher, which I won't mention, except they already you actually just, just said, said their name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, they, they were uh, like, check, check please, but with girls. Yeah, check please, but, but with girls. Check please. <laughs> check, check please. Check, 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 check please. Check please. Uh, see, that's so much no, smarter. I, I like check please. Check please. Okay. And <laughs> I went to Madeline and I was just like, okay, I'm thinking we'll do a sport um, softball. Do you want to? You have experience with that. Yes, I, I have, played softball competitively for about 10 years. Maybe maybe like eight years, mm. but um, I, I can't say it was my favorite thing to do. But I sure <laughs> did know a lot about it, and I sure had played it a lot. This is being live streamed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we just decided like this would be a fun collaboration. It would be about art school. We crammed so many yeah. things into this book. This book is about three different things. <laughs> three different things. Our publisher was like. Uh, we can market this maybe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's things that we all, we just wanted it to be funny too. That's like the unifying like glue of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's very funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. it was like our, our experience together at, at an art school, our experience, you know, having difficulty finding financial aid or um, in my case, I did have that scholarship, but I lost it the very next quarter because uh, I got B's in two classes because I was so yeah. sick. Uh, so yeah. I had to take only one class the next quarter, pay for it out of pocket, get an A plus, and then that bumped my GPA back up enough. Yeah. So it sucked. But <laughs> <laughs> Write what you know. Yeah. Wow, that bronchitis really. That takes- bronch- it, it was terrible. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I will not. I will not diminish how how bad that was. <laughs> so yeah, tell us a lot more about you know your college experience. I mean, like, wait we a minute. All went to SCAD yeah. yeah, I also I went say, to SCAD too. Jeremy and I went to undergrad together. Yeah, and Gozi and I went to grad together. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, SCAD is a he- like, you know, we you name it something different in the book. The Peachtree Institute of Collegiate Arts, <laughs> or PICA. <laughs> Pika. Yeah. And, you know, it's it when I was reading it, obviously I had all this like traumatic flashback <laughs> to s- not just school, but Savannah's in general. You know, why did you guys really go so hard? <laughs> it's unreal. This is, this is me. This is an Ngozi yeah. problem. Yeah, Let's this talk is about me. it. I, okay. I want to hear, you know, ab- about why you wanted to do it about you know, college debt and all this, you know, that's like a huge part of the story. Yes. And I think there's not a lot of books talking about that either. Yeah. I mean, people don't want to talk about money just straight up. Like people don't want to, I mean, even in this room, I'm sure everyone has an experience where you've been like the poorest person in the class or maybe some of y'all the richest, I don't know. And (laughs) there's shame on both sides. Like rich people don't want to talk about being rich. Poor kids don't want to talk about being poor. Middle class kids are actually the luckiest because they get to be like, oh, I was just raised. We we had to struggle a little bit. (laughs) But like, it's really hard to talk about money. Um, And I went to, for undergrad, I went to undergrad for free. And people, when I say that to people, they look at, (laughs) I see you, Otto. We, that's my classmate right there. Like when people, you say that to people and they're like, oh my God, you're a genius. It's like, no, I'm, I was just poor. <laughs> Cause Yale has a thing where if you, if your family makes under a certain income, you go to school for free. So when I went to SCAD, I was a little taken aback by how much they were asking of students who are like 17, 18 yeah. to, I mean, do things that they're passionate about, but Honestly, like there's not a direct pipeline to because you're paying the same amount of money to like 
that someone who's going to be a surgeon is going to pay. <laughs> right. And you're like, I don't know. Comic make, books. Making comic books. <laughs> Expecting to have to pay that back yeah. is like a lot. Yeah. And I just would love, like, I would love every student who is considering art school to pick up this book. And it's a little bit of a pill in the peanut butter thing. It's like you're laughing at the furries. Yes, there's bar porn. <laughs> but there's an important lesson to be learned. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking directly to Paula Wallace, <laughs> the president of SCAD. Come at me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal. And you, you had a very similar experience somewhat, too, or? Um, As well, you were drawing it. Oh, I, yes. You know. no, no, <laughs> like, you know. Not that you didn't have the same cynicism and rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, certainly. I think, uh, I ha I, you know, I, I feel like I had a very you know, lucky uh, experience at SCAD. I met really wonderful people that I was, you know, lifelong friendships in my <laughs> wedding. And so everything. far. So far. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. No, I, I feel the same way. It's like, yeah. you know, I really like the, the teachers in our department, yeah. but yeah. I think the school was a bit yes. crazy and yeah. I think it's pretty up. Yeah. ridiculous to yeah. ask that amount of money for, uh, yes, uh, an education where there is honestly like no real like no nine to five yeah. option no even five it's option. like not even that it's like such a you have to be every single part of the process you have to hustle you have to be good at self-promotion which in gozi is and i am not <laughs> so <laughs> i feel like we we help each other in that way but um it's just yeah and then it's like you, it's not you're not a surgeon you're not like you know, a nurse, a doctor, uh, an aerospace engineer, engineer yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, it's a comic book artist, which not to say that entertainment uh, is not something that everybody needs, especially in, you know, times uh, when they're feeling down or tough or anything. But it's like to sort of pay the same amount of money <laughs> to exactly. learn how to do that. when You can learn it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a little crazy. It's a little wild. <laughs> All right. So. So, you, so you talked about some of the difference between what you guys do. Um, how was it working together on this? You know, dividing yeah. the different jobs that you do. You wrote it. You illustrated it. Um, how was it working together across, you know, the country from Boston to Austin? What was that like? Atlanta, too. Atlanta, Atlanta too. Yeah. It started in Atlanta. <laughs> it <ended there> too. <laughs> no, I'm never going back there. Um, yeah, I honestly, Madeline, you are such a good collaborator. And I've said this on every single tour stop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's that thing of you're not only patient, but you give feedback that is that always helps the story. So this was my first time writing a script for like, I, I mean, for Check Please, I just wrote that for myself. All my scripts looked insane. But when I was writing for someone else, I I don't know. I, I There's so many things that like I didn't, I just took for granted. Like I do a lot of that word to translation like in thumbnails, but you really helped out with that, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, every once in a while, yes, there would be like a nine, panel page and I'd be like let's 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 you know move this out a little bit or yeah when things would start to get a little dense let's just space this a little bit every once in a while there would be just a line of text that says four pages of softball here <laughs> I trust you yeah. yeah how many notes did you have for Ngozi's script uh, <laughs> I mean uh, we, we sort of like yeah. spitballed the whole thing more or less together I think we had a lot of like, oh, this would be so funny. This would yes. be. Uh, there was a lot of me saying, "This would be so funny. Let's put it in." And Ngozi saying, "Madeline, that means you have to draw like ten more pages." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And me being like, "Yeah, darn, she, this <laughs> joke can't go in." Exactly. Yeah. This book could have been like, honestly, it could have been like four times as long. Yeah, <laughs> could have been like a hundred pages per uh, per character. semester yeah. per character. <laughs> it would have been eleven hundred pages long. It's like a new manga. Yeah. You're, you're, you both do solo projects, and you both are in web comics. Yes. And web comics, you know, you can really just add in oh, yes, a bunch of can. 10 pages of jokes <laughs> yeah. and, you know, jump into the plot again later after those 10 pages. You know, what, what can you talk about the differences between working in web comics and then making this graphic novel? Yeah, man. And Gozi, you also did, like, fan fiction <laughs> early on in your life, uh, right? Oh, oh, what I, are the different worlds? I just got gagged. 
<laughs> there's so many different worlds where yeah i wrote these and questions <laughs> i did not ask you to ask me about fan fiction i'm just i just gotta bring it up just gotta bring it up well let's talk well i, I will i'm always down to talk about fan fiction <laughs> but madeline what is the difference between making a web comic and working for a publisher it's my favorite part <laughs> So the difference between uh, when you are a webcomic artist, you are a sicko. You are sicko number one. <laughs> and that means that uh, you, sicko positive. Um, you are singularly focused on this story that you want to make that probably no traditional publisher will touch. For me, my big webcomic is 14 years old. It's over 600 pages long. It's strip format. It's black and white. Nobody's going to publish that <laughs> except for me. <laughs> and I'm the one who has to keep it going. Me and my 10 sickos who <laughs> love it so much. That's what happens when you are a sicko, you're making a web comic, you will find 10 other sickos who love what you do and will follow you for the rest of your life. And when you're in traditional publishing, you're a sicko in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> you shave just a few of the harsh edges off. You say, we have to actually sell this, mm. you know to a, a, be a bigger number of people, more than 10 sickos. And uh, yeah, you just sort of, there's certain things I think that are you know popular, things that people wanna see, people are interested in reading on a, a wider scale than sort of the weird little you know worms that you have in your own brain. But these are like, <laughs> these are bigger worms. These you have to deal with snakes. <laughs> to piggyback off that. Sorry, that got a little. <laughs> I think I think the sicko in the suit. It's a little bit of a Trojan horse, a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. You, but the other sickos who might like be also sickos in wolf's clothing, <laughs> they'll they'll find that book and they'll be like, oh, wait a minute, I think a sicko made wait this. A minute. <laughs> I understand. I see what I see. They you know, see it. pulling the wool from my eyes. So there's like a sicko to sicko connection. There is. I think that yes, if you were to read this book, you could definitely tell it was made by two sickos who <laughs> make web comics. Yeah, <laughs> web comics. I don't know. I feel like that is the most like it's the it's the art form of integrity. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's that it's thing people say. Sunk cost. <laughs> <laughs> integrity and sunk cost. Yeah. You know that famous <laughs> Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> Junior quote. No, Sorry, oh. please tell me what it was. <laughs> yeah, you know, web comics are the art form of integrity okay. and sunk cost. All during this tour, we've been trying to crack each other up, and it, we're really good at it. <laughs> this is our last stop. <laughs> so we're pulling out all, all the stops. stops. <laughs> Real sicko mode. Uh, uh, Mads, did you did you uh, <laughs> did you go back to Savannah to do any research for this or? Did well, you just have so much? I had my memories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> logged in you. Yes, there was a lot logged in me. Um, definitely, uh, well, there were things that had already gone like out by the time we were sort of ready to start making this book. Like um, the main character, Molly, has uh, her family owns a hardware store that I based off of a place called Thrifty's Hardware. Do you remember Thrifty's? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, which is... Rotten? No. No, it was on, I think on MLK. MLK. It was long gone. It had only been there like, <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back every, around. Every street <laughs> in Atlanta, it's like every city in Atlanta has like an MLK. An MLK and a peach tree. <laughs> and a peach tree. Yeah, yeah. which, yeah. it's uh, That's, the Peach Tree yeah. Institute of yeah. Collegiate Arts. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, so there were definitely things that, I, I feel like I was trying more to capture the memory in my head rather than like a one-to-one -one mm -hmm. connection uh, in a lot of these places. But I did use a lot of Google Street View. Sure. And I did, you know, there's like a financial aid office that the main character goes to. And like that was the um, uh, the really like ornate looking Bank of America oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the one square. Yeah. Um, and then. converted that to a restaurant now, I think. Did they? Yeah. The Bank of America? It's like a, it's like called the vault. Wow. And it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. yeah. See, um, I was actually just in uh, Savannah at SCAD uh, for Comics Art Forum. Okay. Yeah. Um, just a few weeks ago and things were even different than like the last right. two years ago that I had been there. So it's an ever changing city due in part mostly to the Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah, yeah, so they is, do a lot of stuff there. Yes, a they do. A lot of real estate fun stuff. And so, yeah, it was um, yeah, it was kind of from a lot of different places, but yeah, certainly yeah. I had a lot of places in mind from Savannah specifically. What I was really struck by in the art was that you did a lot of action 
stuff like that was really cool to see. Yeah. Um, can you talk about some of your influences and what you know who you sort of looked at and styled after? Maybe you went to the softball field. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. It was yes. It was definitely a lot of I know I know what it looks like to play softball certainly, and uh, I do love to draw action. I feel like all my life I've just worked on projects where it's like slice of life or uh, like regular show. regular show or well actually no regular show probably lent itself a lot okay. more to to what I was doing here. Oh yeah, before I did all of this, I drew uh, regular show in Adventure Time of Steven Universe and right. like all the These licensed were, comics. These were the boom comics. The yeah. boom comics. Um, I would say my biggest, earliest comic book influence was uh, the Jamie Hewitt Tank Girl comics, mm. uh, which he also did Gorillas, which probably known more for that. But um, yeah, and then I mean, I love manga. Mm. Uh, I love things like uh, Golden Kamui and like big like I'm gonna punch you in the f like a bear <laughs> is going to attack you sort of right manga. lots of speed lines lots of speed lines <laughs> yeah and Gozi you and I played softball last summer together oh what a memory <laughs> <laughs> yeah what was it like you know what, I, I don't know how much softball you've played that was the first <laughs> time the first I played time? softball yeah just like when I wrote check please I was the first time <laughs> I ice skated like yeah the second time we now talk about the similarities between the <gasps> your two projects. Oh Check, my please, gosh! And Binds and the themes. And Check that Check Leisha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the 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 spinoff that you're about to write. Yeah. It's like Check Please beats Moesha. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what we were writing. B to the I to the. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, I don't know if you guys watch Moesha. Anyway. Um, Oh my gosh. Well, first I want to say playing softball was really fun. It was the New Yorker cartoonist. And well, it was like, it's mostly the puzzlers and the cartoonists right. were out the there. The fact checkers. The fact yeah. checkers. And puzzle people. I feel like <laughs> I ain't ever going to see Ronan Farrow running around. No. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just us weirdos out there. That was really fun. Um, against like the Paris Review. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Damn. Yeah. I There's know. just the, the magazines all play each other. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> That this could, could be, be a comic I itself. Bet, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be oh, like a meet cute or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, We're all trying to make ooh, more money. I'm like, Mary, <laughs> shall we be upon the same page? <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's really good. <laughs> I mean, that's like a manga title, not on the same page. Oh, oh I can. Oh, I, I, I'm like ready to pitch this. The next Here's one. The, the next, next one. one. Two ready. Bunt yeah. two. Yeah. Bunt two. <laughs> Bunt two. Uh, <laughs> Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Slap. <laughs> Screwball. Yeah. Screwball. 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 Um, so, and I, I warned Jeremy that he'd have to be like the teacher <laughs> to keep us in line. Um, okay, so comparing and contrasting, bunt and check, please. Overall, if you read any of my stories, you're going to see a lot of things of like friendship, people from very disparate backgrounds coming together to like work on one thing. There are the more like apparent similarities, like sports. There's like a bunch of queer people. Like there's usually characters who are like inseparable and insane. I'm talking about Ransom and Holster. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. I usually like I think in um, in Blunt I was really concerned with making Molly a really active protagonist. I think God bless Biddy. Um, <laughs> That boy isn't the most active <laughs> protagonist. He kind of just is like, whoa, oh no. <laughs> oh, I love Jack. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> you know that famous yeah, part of Chuck like, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> <He goes, laughs> I love Jack. And everyone's like, <laughs> you never talk like that, Biddy. Um, it's because he loves him so much. <laughs> he gets so Southern when he talks about Jack. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I really wanted to make Molly an active protagonist. Every scene she was like, I have a singular goal, like something that she yearned for. And yeah, I think there's also this theme of like, oh my gosh, institutions being like things that you become familiar with, but they aren't like every institution, in order to become an institution, you basically have to amass a lot of wealth and power. So I like to think of institutions like powerful people. Yes, they can ostensibly do like good things and they can seem really attractive and cool, but once you get to know them, you realize, hey, in order to gain all that power, you kind of have to you kind of have to um, do things that aren't 
always moral or aren't, aren't always driven by empathy. I'm talking about Rihanna here. Um, <laughs> no, she's great. No, she's no, she's fantastic. Uh, great Super Bowl. But it, yeah, I think I think every like if every kid kind of knew that, like the institutions that you interact with, not just academics, not just where you work for, like maybe I could help like pillow the cynicism that you'll encounter. So, and ch there's none of that in check, please. It's just pies and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome, okay. Um, Thanks for that question. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I wanna ask you guys what you guys might be working on next. <gasps> anything in the pipeline, anything? Yeah. You also are working on a billion things. Let's, you go first. You want me? Okay. Well, yes, right now I am uh, hopping back after a big hiatus to my long running over 14 year old webcomic, uh, Sakana, which uh, there's 40 new pages out now. Ooh. So yeah, I'm very proud of myself. Fish. Fish. Um, and then uh, at some point I will probably um, start chapter two of that other one that was mentioned at the beginning, but we don't have to talk about so much. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the one for mature audiences. And uh, <laughs> I'm also, um, uh, <laughs> Doing a 180 and uh, learning uh, concept art in 3D. So mm. <laughs> I just jumped in UE5 for the very first time. Oh so very excited to maybe go into the video games industry. Just try something new. Very nice. Very nice. I love this audience. They're like, ooh. <laughs> UE, that's the Unreal Engine? Unreal Engine, Engine okay. 5, yes. Mm -hmm. My partner is a uh, video ah. game senior. Thank you, Gannon. <laughs> 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 And yourself? Yeah, so this summer I have another book out. It's called Barda. It's my first time working with DC Comics. Y'all, I love comics and I like New Yorker stuff. I'm just here to draw superheroes at the end of the day. Like that's <laughs> like that's what lights me up. Barda is the story of a girl from a, an apocalyptic planet. The planet's actually called Apocalypse. With, with a K. With yeah. a K. Jack Kirby. Yeah cool dude um, <laughs> but these are Jack Kirby characters and basically she's like this mean tough stoic soldier and she's be she comes she becomes a warden for um, a freedom fighter and she takes one look at that freedom fighter and she's like that's a cute boy <laughs> <laughs> so it's about See some her. themes yeah. popping up again <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's a story about how she goes from being this like soldier to being I mean she to totally defects and she like sets people free and uh i'm really excited about it i love comics That's so yeah. yeah it comes out june 4th and you should get it yeah yeah hopefully you'll do another tour yeah. and come back into town i'll come back yeah all right at this point we're going to open it up into audience questions does anyone have a question yes right here hello um, hello I was wondering if you have any um, insight into, you know, the cost benefit analysis of a bachelor's degree in art school versus a <laughs> graduate degree in art school. All right. So for the web stream, I'll repeat it. Um, this audience member wants to know what is the cost benefits <laughs> of going into spending your money on undergrad or spending it on grad school, which is is there benefits, positives. What do you think about negatives? undergrad, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> the tables have turned. Well, I mean, undergrad, I think, is still somewhat necessary to get work and stuff. Art school-wise, it's yeah, not Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I definitely think that, yeah, for grad school, it's like that's sort of your honing in on mm -hmm. what you want to do. Um, Undergrad, I feel like you really could watch some YouTube videos and yeah. see if that's like really what you want, and yeah. then maybe, you know, go to a slightly less expensive school and get all of your uh, gen eds out of the way at least. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I feel like this is a pr almost a clear cut answer. Like, you can go to state school, community college, anywhere, uh, to get a trade, develop some skill, and then draw on the side, and then hone that in grad school. That's what I did. Yeah, I went to this trade school. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> I mean, I will say for, for undergrad, um, I can't uh, say that uh, I didn't have a great time there and I didn't meet great people there, uh, including my brother-in-law, um, which is how I met my partner. But um, also, yeah, I mean, you know, it's sort of, I think, I did not know that I wanted to do comics before I went into undergrad and it's sort of, for me, 
solidified that idea of like, yes, this is what I like to do. I think that I'm talented at this and I can continue to do it. It's It gets pretty bad when it's somebody who's gone through all four years and it's the very end and they're like, I don't know if this is what I wanted to do. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. uh-oh, you don't have any other marketable skills. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, yeah. You don't want to go to college again. Yeah, yeah, you don't really want to pay for college again. So I would say either be extremely sure that like you want the connections there you're already hopefully you've already made some comics yourself i would say make some comics first yourself and then see if that's really something that you want yeah i think i remember having a lot of people switch majors from different departments Mm -hmm. you know people who wanted to be animation and illustration they came over to sequential Mm -hmm. so yeah there were a lot of people that is to say we've been talking a lot of mess on scad uh, but sequential, uh, that is a great department. That I mean, is a fantastic yeah. department. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had a great time there. Yeah. I mean, I think this is normal for all art schools. I've, I've talked to many people from different art schools, and they all feel somewhat similarly about their school, too. So it's not too crazy what we're saying. <laughs> we're, we're not outliers here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question over here. Right. Thanks, so, thanks so, for that, Autumn. <laughs> so for the web stream, the question is about um, how you got to, it's such a, sh- you know, it's 288 pages, and there's a huge ensemble of characters. How did you economically um, are able to fit all of these different storylines and all these different, you know, characters in it? Which I actually wanted to say, the, there's so many easy, identifiable characters in this you know, you don't get confused at all when, you know, that's that's sometimes a problem with some some books like this. But, you know, everyone is so unique and so has such a personality and they all get to have their moments. Um, how did you guys feel about I mean, working I, on this? I, th- I think it's a combination. Like, I mean, you have such expressive character design. Like, I think uh, being accused of like same face drawing is like my biggest fear so i'm like everybody has to look so different (laughs) they have to be within like one or two feet height difference you know a whole range of different things um yeah i mean uh i feel like this book could you like we said could have been a billion times longer Mm -hmm. i also feel like it it might seem short to you guys it was pretty (laughs) it was almost 300 pages to draw (laughs) It's very long for a comic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for a graphic novel. Um, and uh, I feel like I made it longer at yeah, different was, parts than it actually was yeah. going to be. But that was just like sort of smoothing out a few like scenes and stuff. But um, I think just it is like clarity. Yeah, I, I think you're, the way you draw the characters is so appealing. So they're like cute or weird or just like funny. And I think my biggest thing when I'm writing characters, I do, I try to do two things. I really try to make, it very clear what a character wants or what's their driving thing, whether it's curiosity or nosiness or creepiness. <laughs> and then when you kind of mix that with another character, you kind of get this nice little like chemistry, this like peanut butter and jelly where you really want to see like different iterations of like, oh my gosh, what's nosiness versus like creepiness? How does that look like? How does like, I don't know, like super fashion-y, like girly. How do you like cross that with someone who's- Goth boy. With goth boy, (laughs) which is where you get a great scene where we have our fashionista girl who claims that she doesn't run. Um, (laughs) Like, oh yeah, and and she basically hits like this grand slam. And the home run. And the goth boy who we forced to be a coach, he's like yelling at her about to die. And she's just like kind of walking. And like the only the only page I agreed to draw nine, nine panels on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went pure Watchmen on that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so just channeling it. Yeah, just yeah. making characters kind of have like this initial core, and then pushing them out into the world and playing with them like dolls. Yeah, I, yeah, especially like I said, um, clarity. It's yeah. like if you're gonna have eleven characters in a less than three hundred page book, it has to be clear, like from from you know page one that they appear on, like who is this person. What are they here for? Uh, you know, how much can we tell about them just by the way that they look, the way that they enter the scene, and then that sort of makes things easy to go from there. All right, we have a question here. Um, okay, so you currently live in Boston. You currently live in Texas. 
How do you um, know that? You both, I know you went to school in the Northeast. You both also went to school in the South. How, that? those are, I went to school in the South. I live up here now. Those are two very different <laughs> cultures, the sort of this area of the country and that area of the country. Um, how do you think that like having those two sort of cultural backgrounds mix fits in with the way that you write Ooh. the characters? All right, so uh, this audience member wants to know what's the difference between East Coast and s the South. South Coast. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you did you guys live anywhere else besides I'm these from places? From Philly. You're from Philly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. You got Philly I mean, vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that 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 that's Summarize in me it. in me a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. You know. Uh, there's an amazing director named Bong Joon-ho. Did I say his name correctly? <laughs> and he said once that uni the universal is specific. The specific is universal. I don't really know how to answer this question, so I'm stalling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't really, I don't know. Like, like honestly, um, people are kind of similar all over the world. And the South is, is a little different. But once you get down to it, like a lot of Southerners are <laughs> just like a lot of Northerners. I don't know. I'm Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I definitely, I mean, when I went down for undergrad, uh, that was the first time I had ever been to Georgia. Um, I um, did not even go and visit the school before I agreed to uh, matriculate there. I actually went to Emerson College in uh, Boston for my very, for my, uh, freshman year and I was like I don't like this <laughs> even though I live in Boston now uh, I came back but not for Emerson um, but so yeah I just like really on a whim I was like I've never been to Georgia I've never been to the Savannah College of Art and Design I've never studied sequential art I'll just give it a shot and honestly I miss Georgia a lot sometimes I think for myself I you know I'm from Philly. We live in Boston now. We love New York City. I feel like the Northeast is somewhere where I feel more strongly about just in general. But Georgia is so fantastic. There's just so many wonderful people there. And I feel like Savannah itself is such an incredible place to like spend so much of my life. So it much of all of our place, life, yeah. all of our lives. Savannah is an amazing town. And I think that that, you know, even just the spirit of that, I think, came into the book you know, not even just like the other art school students that we uh, knew, uh, but also, yeah, just the, the feeling of being in a sort of small southern town that is constantly under threat from this art, art school <laughs> mega corporation. <laughs> it really is a one-to-one -one with the book and, and our experience in Savannah. But um, yeah, that, that's what I would say. Thank you. All right, we have a question in the back. <laughs> Wasn't that bad? <laughs> we brought that up. <laughs> All right. So we want to know: is you know, you do stand up in Texas. Um, how? What is the difference between do, like doing stand up and then also doing this hilarious comic? So stand up is all writing. It's really interesting that. Um, when you think about stand-up comedians, you're like, wow, they're just wacky clowns. They're just going, they're just going crazy up there. <laughs> That's what I say when I go to a stand-up show. Um, but it is a lot of writing. It's a lot of repetition. Um, when you're hanging out with stand-ups, uh, you're going to hear like, the same joke like 40, 50, 100 times because it takes like a year to, like, it depends on how much someone's going up, but it takes like a year to like develop five minutes. Um, so I don't know. Stand up is stand up has been really fun for me. It's a it. I do like it because it's writing. I like it because it's memorization. I like it because it's preparation, which is all things that like every type A person. Maybe you guys should do stand up. <laughs> yeah, we can just like oust all the Joe Rogan people. <laughs> it's like we're taking over. Um, and then the the people who do it are just really fun and just 
just the weirdest, weirdest group. Um, and I get a lot of creative energy from that. And comics are like cartoonists, which, I, yeah, also being a cartoonist and making comics and hanging out with comics is, you, you get a lot of really fun wordplay there. <laughs> they make fun of me, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not my career. It's, it's definitely just a fun hobby. Um, it gets you to talk to other people. Yeah. And <laughs> get out of your house. It's a, it's really a social thing. I think my therapist is like, you have to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't have such a downer note. <laughs> uh, sad clown. <laughs> um, well, for, uh, my partner and I, uh, we do, uh, drag. And um, I'm a drag king. She is a drag queen. And uh, we do uh, outfits together. And we have aspirations to perform. But uh, for now, it's mostly just learning how to sew. And that's been a really great um, experience just to sort of like really throw all of your artistic uh, energy, your problem solving skills into something that, yeah, like is again, not, not, monon not monetized. Not, not monetized. <laughs> Uh, not even out in public yet. We're just we're just bedroom, <laughs> bedroom, <laughs> bedroom kings and queens, which is a thing. It, it, it doesn't we mean what you think it is. Bedroom, bedroom kings and queens. <laughs> and it's not what you think it is. It just means that we're too scared to perform <laughs> out in public. So we so we just post on Instagram. Um, bedroom bedroom cool. kings. Yeah, but uh, no, I mean that's been fantastic. Uh, we've definitely met a lot of new people that way. It, again, it's the social interaction. It's the trying something new that stretches your brain in a different way creatively. And um, it's been great. It's been fantastic. Uh, we should really get out there and perform. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. will. We will. You will. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have time for one more question. Did I see any in the back here? OK, right here. Uh, I mean, so, so the so the question uh, is <laughs> sorry. So the question is, um, whenever you come up with ideas for books or graphic novels, do you think that your idea might be too out there? I have a great I have a great solution for you. It's <laughs> it's called a web comic. <laughs> no one can take that from no you. No one can take that from you. Uh, you you become a sicko. Yeah. <laughs> That's your sicko idea, and you have to get it out, even if it's not monetizable. <laughs> I think some people have that fear of like, oh, if I put my idea out there, someone's going to take it. I have news for you. Most ideas are bad. Um, <laughs> and, and like very rarely do I see something that is executed so like not perfectly, but just like weirdly that it like gets me. Usually I'm the person who has to like just do it myself. Um, like you make your own food, right? Yeah. Um, you grow in your own garden, <laughs> <laughs> harvesting your blue posts. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I think ending on a Blorbo harvest is what we need to. Maybe that's how we'll wrap up this whole shebang. <laughs> wrap up our entire tour, because this is our last stop. Eat, eat your darlings. <laughs> eat your darlings. <laughs> Feast on your Blorbos. All right, thank you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, give it up for Mad Rupert and Gozi Ukazu. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, no hey, can you guys give it up for Books or Magic? Books Keep it going, magic. Books or Magic. What's up? Thank you. Really appreciate what up? it. Thank you guys so much. Thank